All right, folks, gather round. Let's talk about this U.S.-China tech war, a real nail-biter, if you ask me. See, it doesn't matter who's calling the shots from the Oval Office. This thing ain't slowing down. Both sides, they're dug in like ticks on a hound dog, each one dead set on keeping the other from becoming the top dog in the tech world. It's a standoff, and nobody's blinking. This ain't just about who gets the coolest gadgets, folks. This is about power. The kind of power that comes with controlling the technologies that shape our world, from artificial intelligence to 5G networks. It's about economic dominance, national security, and bragging rights for the 21st century. And let me tell you, it's getting tense. So buckle up, Buttercup, because we're diving headfirst into this tech showdown. We're going to break down the strategies, the players, and the potential fallout of this high-stakes game of technological chicken. And trust me, you're going to want to stick around. Because this ain't your grandma's Cold War. This is the tech-fueled sequel, and it's got the potential to reshape the world as we know it. Now let's talk strategy, specifically the Harris approach. It's a multifaceted plan that involves not just diplomacy, but also a deep understanding of the technological landscape. Picture this, Kamala Harris, phone glued to her ear, rallying the troops, or in this case, our allies. She's constantly in touch with leaders from around the world, ensuring that everyone is on the same page. She's all about building a united front, a coalition of the willing and the technologically advanced, to stand up to China's growing tech might. This isn't just about defense. It's about creating a proactive strategy that can anticipate and counteract moves from Beijing. See, Harris gets it. Going it alone ain't gonna cut it. The tech world is too interconnected, too globalized for any one country to tackle these challenges by itself. China's a heavyweight, and to counter that, you need a tag team. It's like a high-stakes boxing match where every punch counts, and Harris is making sure we have the right partners in our corner. She's all about fostering cooperation, sharing intelligence, and coordinating policies with like-minded countries. This means regular meetings, constant communication, and a shared vision for the future. Think of it as a tech NATO, a global alliance of democracies committed to keeping China's tech ambitions in check. This alliance isn't just about defense. It's about innovation, ensuring that democratic nations lead the way in technological advancements. Now, this ain't just some idealistic kumbaya session. It's a strategic, calculated move to ensure that the balance of power in the tech world doesn't tip too far in China's favor. Harris knows that a united front sends a clear message to Beijing. You want to play dirty? You're going to have to answer to all of us. This isn't just about competition. It's about setting the rules of the game. It's about leveraging collective strength, pooling resources, and presenting a united front that China can't ignore. This means joint investments in technology, shared research initiatives, and a commitment to mutual defense in the cyber realm. But here's the thing. Building a coalition takes time, diplomacy, and a whole lot of trust. It's not just about signing agreements, it's about building relationships, understanding each other's strengths and weaknesses, and working together towards a common goal. And in the fast-paced world of tech, where innovation moves at the speed of light, can Harris build this alliance fast enough to keep up with China's relentless drive? The stakes are high, and the clock is ticking. That's the million-dollar question, folks. Can this coalition not only keep pace with China, but also set the standard for the future of global technology? Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure. Harris is in it for the long haul, and she's not backing down. Now let's talk about the other guy, the Donald, the tariff king himself. Donald Trump, the 45th president of the United States, was known for his unconventional and often controversial approach to politics and international relations. His tenure was marked by a series of bold moves that left a lasting impact on the global stage. His approach? Well, imagine a bull in a China shop. Only the bull is wearing a Make America Great Again hat, and the China shop is the global tech industry. This metaphor perfectly encapsulates the chaos and disruption that characterized Trump's trade policies. He charged into the delicate and interconnected world of global trade with a force that left many scrambling to adapt. Trump's strategy was all about shock and awe, slapping tariffs on Chinese goods left and right, and trying to strong-arm American companies into decoupling from China. He believed that by imposing these tariffs, he could pressure China into changing its trade practices, which he viewed as unfair and detrimental to American interests. He called it a trade war, but it was really a tech war in disguise. The real battleground was the technology sector, 
where both nations were vying for supremacy. The stakes were incredibly high, as the winner would likely dominate the global economy for decades to come. Trump saw China's rise as a threat to American dominance, and he wasn't afraid to throw some economic elbows to try and slow them down. His aggressive stance was rooted in a belief that China was not playing by the rules and that decisive action was needed to level the playing field. He imposed tariffs on billions of dollars worth of Chinese imports, restricted Chinese investment in U.S. tech companies, and banned Huawei, a Chinese tech giant, from doing business with American firms. These measures were designed to protect American intellectual property and prevent China from gaining an edge in critical technologies. Trump supporters cheered him on, arguing that he was finally getting tough on China. They believed that his hardline approach was necessary to protect American jobs and industries from unfair competition. But critics argued that his tactics were counterproductive, hurting American businesses and consumers in the process. They pointed out that the tariffs led to higher costs for imported goods which were often passed on to consumers in the form of higher prices. They pointed out that tariffs rarely work as intended, often leading to higher prices and job losses. The increased costs of raw materials and components made it difficult for American manufacturers to compete, leading to layoffs and factory closures. And they argued that Trump's go-it-alone approach alienated America's allies, making it harder to build a united front against China. By acting unilaterally, Trump risked isolating the U.S. from its traditional partners, who were also concerned about China's rise but preferred a more collaborative approach. Love him or hate him? There's no denying that Trump's presidency was a turning point in the U.S.-China tech relationship. His actions brought the issue to the forefront of public consciousness and forced policymakers to grapple with the complexities of the global tech landscape. He brought the issue to the forefront, exposed the vulnerabilities, and set the stage for a new era of competition between the world's two largest economies. The ripple effects of his policies are still being felt today, as both nations continue to jockey for position in the high-stakes world of technology and innovation. The legacy of Trump's tech war is a more fragmented and competitive global tech industry where the lines between allies and adversaries are increasingly blurred. Okay, so we've got these two different approaches. But what do the folks who actually study this stuff for a living have to say? What insights can the experts provide us with, given their deep understanding and years of research in this field? Well, I'll tell you. The experts are about as divided as a Thanksgiving dinner table after someone brings up politics. It's a heated debate with strong opinions on both sides and no clear consensus in sight. Some of them, they're downright gloomy, predicting a full-blown decoupling of the U.S. and Chinese tech sectors. They foresee a future where the two largest economies in the world operate in completely separate technological spheres. They paint a picture of two separate competing tech ecosystems, each with its own standards, supply chains, and innovations. Imagine a world where American and Chinese technologies are incompatible, creating significant barriers for global collaboration. Think of it as a tech iron curtain, separating the digital world into two distinct spheres of influence. This division could lead to increased costs, reduced innovation, and a fragmented global market. Now, on the other side of the coin, you got the optimists. Bless their hearts. These folks believe that the situation isn't as dire as it seems and that there are still opportunities for cooperation and mutual benefit. They argue that complete decoupling is practically impossible. The global economy is too interconnected, and the technological ties between the U.S. and China are too deep to be severed entirely. The two economies, they say, are just too intertwined. The flow of goods, services, and information between the two countries is so extensive that any attempt to fully decouple would be both impractical and damaging to both sides. They point to the deep integration of global supply chains which rely on components and materials sourced from all over the world. Disrupting these supply chains would have far-reaching consequences for industries and consumers alike. The collaborative nature of scientific research is another factor that makes complete decoupling unlikely. Scientists and researchers from different countries often work together on projects that benefit humanity as a whole, and this spirit of collaboration, and let's not forget the sheer volume of trade between them of trade between the two countries. The U.S. and China are each other's largest trading partners, and the economic interdependence is a powerful force that encourages cooperation. They believe that cooler heads will eventually prevail, 
leading to a more pragmatic and cooperative relationship. The optimists argue that economic self-interest will drive both countries to find common ground and work together for mutual benefit. But here's the thing, folks. Nobody knows for sure how this thing is going to play out. The future is uncertain, and there are many variables at play that could influence the outcome of this tech war. It's a high-stakes game of technological chicken, and there's no roadmap, no crystal ball to tell us what the future holds. Both sides are pushing their agendas, and the stakes are incredibly high for everyone involved. The only thing we know for sure is that the U.S.-China tech war is far from over, and it's going to have major implications for all of us. Whether it's through increased competition, new innovations, or unexpected collaborations, the outcome of this conflict will shape the future of technology and the global economy for years to come. So, buckle up and stay informed, because this ride is just getting started. The decisions made today will have lasting impacts, and it's crucial for us to understand the dynamics at play. Whether you're a tech enthusiast, a business leader, or just someone who uses technology in your daily life, the U.S.-China tech war is something that will affect us all. Keep an eye on the news, follow the developments, and be prepared for a bumpy ride. The world of technology is evolving rapidly, and the U.S.-China tech war is a key part of that evolution. Stay tuned, because the story...